Well, I'm Sinclair Ferguson. Um, as my accent betrays, I'm Scottish. Um, I'm a minister, actually, in the Associate Reform Presbyterian Church in the United States. And I've spent probably more than half my, my life uh, working in the United States as a seminary professor and also uh, latterly as a minister of First Presbyterian Church in uh, Columbia and South Carolina. We are back home in Scotland and uh, my, I guess the central task of my week is that I preach most Sunday evenings in St Peter's Free Church in Dundee and spend uh, much of my time writing. I also uh, teach at Reformed Theological Seminary in uh, its various campuses in the United States and I'm a teaching fellow with Ligonier Ministries. Christian Focus has already published what I think people would see as some of Owen's major works. Uh, Philip Ross, Dr. Ross has edited them um, and they're presented in a, in a kind of user-friendly format here. So any of these seven volumes would, would be a, a good place to start. But perhaps particularly uh, because it looks as though it's the shortest, and it is the shortest, uh, is this book on the glory of Christ, um, which is a marvellous exposition of who Christ is and what Christ has done. And um, there's a great story in connection with this because uh, when Owen was dying, a minister friend who, was, who had taken charge of seeing the book through the press came to tell him that it was already being printed. And in the last day of his life, he said, you know, he was pleased to hear that, but uh, he knew he was going to see the glory of Christ in a way that he had never been able to describe it. Which is a great way of saying that he didn't just write about it, he really looked for it and uh, believed he was about to see it. So this is really a great place to start for someone who has never read any John Owen before. Often people tell you to begin with the mortification of sin. It's shorter than this, but it's not really his best book. It, it actually is a great book, but it's not his best book. It tends to have a focus on ourselves and our struggle with sin. And I think sometimes people read it divorced from what he has to say about Christ. And that's not really a healthy thing to do. So that, that's a great place to begin. My favorite one actually is um, on communion with God. I think probably of all Owen's writings, this is the one that has left the deepest impress on me. Because what he does in this book is to take the unity of the Trinity uh, and emphasizes that there is one God, but this one God exists in three persons. And that in all that God does, uh, God acts as one God, but in everything he does, one or other person of the Trinity will, as it were, take the lead. So the Father takes the lead in creation. The Spirit takes the lead in applying the purposes of the Father and the Son takes the lead in winning us salvation. And uh, if you think about it this way, that means you can never say, Heavenly Father, thank you for dying for me on the cross. But you can say that to the Son. And as he works through these different angles on the riches of what God the Trinity does for us, uh, I think one of the things that results is that when we think about our communion with God, we're not just thinking about communion with the block God, but we are thinking of communion with the Father uh, in the way he has created and sustained us, the Spirit in the way he has worked in us, uh, the Son in the way he has died for us, um, and prays for us. So communion with God is really a, a really rich and uh, unusual treasure. And I notice on the front of this book, I actually have written, I owe an incalculable debt to these pages. So I, but they're all great, great books. And Philip Ross uh, has done a really good job in um, just presenting them in a way that is more helpful to people than the, the, the great 19th century edition of his works. Um, so that's John Owen.